think it's very important that the body of Christ learn that when we, it's not that we need to work up something or we are now so spiritual. No, we are spirit in a body. Amen. We are spirit in a body, people. And I think it's so important that people think that and that they learn. And I especially learned that in my life, that in, in, in a prayer meeting like this or in, and where God starts moving, some will feel very much a flow and an emotion and whatever, and others not. And those that are not feeling that sometimes think they are just not spiritual enough or, yeah, that's for others. It's not so. It's not so. Especially if you learn about through intercession and the different aspects of it, then you start understanding that sometimes God will keep those that I say that are like the watchmen and those that are the runners. And it's just how it is. And all is from God. All is from the Holy Spirit. And I've often found that people feel kind of uncomfortable with it because they think, well, you know what, I'm not like that. It's true. When I am up there, especially if I feel the Holy Spirit really start flowing, it is true. And I say again, thank you to the worship team. Where are those guys? Was I okay wat gelijk it to a broomstick? Was I now? Mr. Broomstick, no, no, no. You're not going to have that now. I promise you. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Bless you. It's okay. Sorry. Yeah. I repent for offending you later. But what for me is so belangrijk is, is, you know, if you start flowing with a worship team like this, it's true. When I feel the Spirit of God move, I take the reins. I do. Because a true leader will guide in the spirit realm if you know where you need to go. And that's sometimes one of the greatest problems in prayer meetings. People don't feel secure because the leader in the front is beating in the air. So it's, it's like that. It doesn't mean we are, need to be offensive or anything. You take the reins. If you are the commander in the front there whom God is using to direct it where the Holy Spirit wants to take, you take the, you take the reins. And with a worship team like this that is flexible and that we could work with, thank you, guys. Amen. All right. I like to go, and because we've got quite a lot going this morning, and there comes a surprise that you don't know about yet, and I'm not telling you yet. Right. I would like us to go this morning real fast, and um, it might be, people, it might be that we go a little bit over lunchtime. Who's going who's gonna to be angry with me? And uh, we have got another wonderful speaker this afternoon. He already, he will be speaking. And he already agreed that we can do that. Nee, my broer, jy het my so gesê. And so I like to go that way. Now, I just want to take this this morning. And I want you to understand why sometimes you feel uncomfortable in an intercession meeting. And I think what a way to enter, I want you to understand, people, that when it comes to intercession, it's not all sizes fit all. And that's the reason why some people don't understand. And I would like to bring that clarity this morning. And then I want to go from that position, maybe we'll just have a, one, a second break or five minutes break just or a minute break just to stand up. And I want to straight kick into the next thing. Is that right? Sorry, I'm pushing it in a little bit. I, um, but you have to listen in far forward. And if you don't get it, you buy the video. Right. <laughs> so, and I want you to understand that just as much as we have diversity in our, in our forces, we have got the army, we have got, uh, we have got the navy, we have got the so foot soldiers, we have got all kinds of different people, and yet they're all in the forces. Isn't that right? Or if I would take here an apple and I put here an apple and a pear and let's say a banana and let's say a, a papaya, it's actually all fruit, but they all look different. And in intercession, it's exactly the same. God gives gifts according to his Holy Spirit. And you must not try to fit into somebody else's box. Because God works with originals also in prayer. And so we need to understand God is not a photocopy machine out of Hong Kong. Come on, say amen. No photocopy machine out of China, yeah? So God is not necessarily going to do a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. 
A copy can look good for a while, but it will never carry an anointing. You understand? You and I can copy. I mean, I can take Tia is here today. She will tell you. I mean, when it comes to really in personality, I would say Reinhardt and I are pretty similar. Even if it is for the determination, even our stubbornness, our hard hits, and the faith in God. Isn't that right? Yet, I am not Reinhard Bonke, and Reinhard Bonke is not me. I don't think he would like to be put in a dress. Come and say amen. And when I started Voice in the City, oh, I learned 18 years the ropes from them, isn't it? So I could easily have copied. Do you understand? I could easily have gone into a copy. But a copy cannot carry an anointing. And that's the first thing I want to say to God's people this morning. Be yourself. God made you that way and flow in who you are. And God can use that the best. Now, I want to quickly go, and I want to put it into four categories this morning. And it's that new. We haven't even printed yet. I've just worked it out on my computer, so I apologize for that. But anyhow, I want you to understand just as much as we, I would have an apple, a pear, a banana, and a papaya here, or a popo. I, I would put it all together, and I would put it in a bowl, and I say to you, what is this? You will say, that's fruit. Correct. Just the same, can we not just say, all right, intercession is intercession and prayer is prayer. No, it is different kinds that God is using, and I'm going to give it to you this morning in four different categories. And I want you to understand that all of us has different assignments, and it took me years to accept that, people. I didn't have a Suzette up there that has walked the fire that could teach me. I came to Jesus in my bedroom. I, I didn't even know that you call it born again. I just turned around and said, God, if you are who these freaks say you are, do something. <laughs> that was it, <laughs> really. And God saved my soul from a place where I actually watched some of my patients as they were dying. And what they experienced showed me that there's life after death. And that's how I came to God. Well, so, so said, did you not grow up? Yes, I have grown up in the form of the Natuurlijk het ek groot geword in die hervormde kerk. Ons het elke zondag hoe, en was ons in kerk, en my ma het geweet om ons al negen van ons te laat stilsit met een kyk. Die van julle weet wat ek bedoel daarmee. One look of my mother and all nine of us were quiet. En dit is ons groot geword het. Ek is die jongste van tien kinders. Een boetie is dood. En het uh, uh, een babiekie gesterf. En ek is die jongste. Maar moet nie denk ek was bederf nie hoor. Ek wil dit net reg sê. In elk geval. And so when we come to prayer. We understand people that God work with diversities. And in my life personally. It took me years to understand that God called me sometimes like a bulldozer. And when God told me that. I said I don't like that. That's not feminine. <laughs> But I had to learn to let the Holy Spirit use us for however he wants to use us, when he wants to use us. And sometimes it's like a breeze, and sometimes it's like a storm. Come on, say amen. And sometimes it's like gentle, refreshing water, and sometimes it is like a worship. And you have to let the Holy Spirit use you the way he wants to use you, when he wants to use you, irrespective of your character. Because it has nothing to do with your personality, really. It has to do with the Spirit of God inside of you. The important thing is, is for you to do your preparation. If I have not spent time with God this morning, I could have just walked in here, started the teaching, and be in the flesh. How many of you understand that? So, I want to come to that, and I want you to understand that God can use you and has given to you. So the first thing I want to, to come to this morning, and I call it general intercession. General intercession. And I want you to understand that everybody used that scripture in Ezekiel 22, for God, look for a man who stands in the gap. Stop. That is not a general statement. Amen. And we're going to look at that. First, turn with me. I quickly, and I, I, I need to hurry, I want to go to 1 Timothy um, chapter 2. I exhort therefore that first of all supplication, prayer, intercessions, and giving thanks be made for all men. All right, let's read it together. Therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving thanks be made for all men. Stop. 
I want you to see that there's a difference between a supplication and a prayer. You need to understand that giving thanks is giving thanks, but there's a difference between a supplication before God and general prayer. And all of that are, is used by the Holy Spirit. So it's made and giving thanks for all men. The next verse, please. Come on, everybody. For kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in godliness and reverence. Now, stop there, right there. I want you to understand that general intercession is part of the body of Christ. And I want to do this today so that the body of Christ can find their place. And that they can understand that they are all called for prayer, as I told you last night. Now, general intercession you're going to find right in that place. Is that only for certain people? No. I want you to understand the importance of that kind of prayer. Because I work in places sometimes where people are not allowed to preach the gospel. And if we don't pray for South Africa so that we can live a quiet, peaceable life and the godliness of God is still allowed in South Africa to be preached people, I tell you it will not be long and that will be gone. So the reason for us to actually start praying is not just for us to be blessed. It's not just for us to have a nice time. It's not just for our churches to be full. It's not just for us to be, to, to be say, wow, great, how, how we grow in church and our pews are full. The true reason for intercession is actually for those in authority for the purpose of the gospel. Amen. And anybody that is watching the news at the moment, that you people know, and I don't want to go into all of that now, I'm very much studying end time. Now, I'm not an end time preacher all the time, but that you people know that now in Sweden, it's agreed that all gender be removed from the Bible. That you know that in 20 years, there will be no Bible found unless it's some of the old Bibles that says that God is a father. There will not be such a thing anymore as Mary, the mother of Jesus. There will not be such a thing anymore as Jesus, the Son of God. So the whole family is removed from the Bible. It's agreed. It is done. They have gotten somebody actually from Rome who is actually a man that they say is gay to rewrite the Bible. And that's the Bible your children and my children will have in the future. That's fact, by the way. That's not a myth. That is absolutely fact. Did you people know that Sweden now has permitted... A marriage of children of 10 years old, little girls of 10 years is permitted. People, we need to wake up to where we stand in the world. Did you know that at this very time, at the moment in the United Kingdom, they are working now on forcing all hundreds and hundreds and thousands of security men that has to take the chip or they lose their job. Did you know that? South Africa, it's time for you to wake up to what's happening in the world. And that's why we are praying. And that's why we need to pray for those in authority so that the gospel continue in this land. And that you and I can preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that we still have the freedom to do so. It's quite a miracle that I can preach the way I do in Indonesia. Indonesia is the largest Muslim country in the world. And you see what I am like when I preach. There is no stop. I'm not preaching there different than here. This is it. Made this way, left this way. You understand what I mean? And yet I have massive crusades in Indonesia, but even that is now becoming far less. And where I am now in, in Papua, Indonesia, not Papua New Guinea, but Papua, Indonesia, I want you to know that more and more there are things in the world, in Pakistan, in India, and everywhere else, where the gospel of Jesus Christ and the right to preach the gospel is actually being clamped upon. And so people, if you really want intercession, then it's not just God give us revival, give us signs, wonders, and miracles. I very seldom pray for signs, wonders, and miracles because I am, in 40 years I've learned, if we truly worship, it will happen. Just like this morning. Where true worship is, their miracles will flow. Where true worship is, signs, wonders, and miracles will flow because God is in his fullness. But for that, it's a command to pray. That does not happen automatically. You understand? Is that clear? Yes? So, 
I am not going to go into all of the end time studies right now, but I would like you to understand the importance of that. So I call that the general prayer. Now, I want you to understand the characteristics of those who find themselves in the category of general intercession, designed by God. I want you to understand that if you find yourself in those characteristics, that doesn't make you a less prayer. It doesn't make you less spiritual. It doesn't make you less powerful. And it doesn't make you less important. It just means that God has decided that that's where he has you. And there you function in your fullness according to God's design in your life. Now, is that only for certain people to pray that? No, we all can pray that. But some people find themselves, and I know you are here in the hall today. That's why I felt that God gave that to me. Those people that are into the general category of the general intercessor and people we desperately need these people. The body of Christ need these people to be able to cover what, for, for what we need in the body of Christ. And they like it that when they have specific targets given to pray scripture. These kind of people, they are not the kind of people that now necessarily going to fall on their face before God and find that scripture and just focusing in on it. That's the kind of people that say, you know what? You, I come to the prayer meeting. You tell me what we are praying. We pray down the list. You give me the scripture and I'm happy to do so. How many of you are like that? Yeah. We need you. We need people like that. That is vital for us to be able to fulfill all the aspects of intercession. And many people like that has that characteristic where they came and they say they are excellent just with a prayer list. Now, I'm not good at that. I'm not good with a prayer list. But some people are. And they would go down that list and they would spend that time before God and they would pray down that list point by point by point. And even better so if you give them the scripture behind it to pray and they're happy with that. And they feel that they can do that. They can cope with that. They can handle that. And I want to tell you that that means that God has put you in and you are as important in that position as any other intercessor. Amen. And if a pastor is wise, he would actually start categorizing his prayer people so that he can understand how to fill the body of Christ into every capacity. And even in my own team, I've got people like that. I've got people in my own team worldwide who are quite happy to go down that list. They want to go into that prayer room. They want that list, the points of prayer. Please pray for this, 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 this. And that way they feel they've got direction. They go with that. They pray with that. And they're happy with that. And I need such people. And the body of Christ needs such people. Now, in general intercession, the characteristics of these people you would find... They are comfortable in, in a prayer meeting where we are now praying for the nation. And you get up there and you say, no, close, now we're going to pray for the nation. And we give them the goal and they pray it. And we say, this is the scripture we are going to pray now. And they feel that way they can bring their side. And they feel it's not too overpowering. It's not too emotional. It's not too flaky. It's not too, not too spiritual. It's not too this. They feel they can flow into that. And God designed them into that place. I want to make that very clear. The second thing we see after general intercession, the second kind of intercessor you're going to find in your church. Please note, I didn't say in your prayer group. Because we need to train the church that they fall into some of these four categories. And they need to function in those categories, and it's fine, and it's good. So the second one we see here, and it's what I call priestly intercession. The number two priestly intercession, and I'm moving fast because we've got quite a bit ahead. The priestly intercession is what I call governmental prayer. Now, I want to draw your attention actually here to, um, to Exodus 28 and verse 29. We see that the high priest went in into the presence of God, Exodus chapter 28 and 29. You don't need to put that up. I have another scripture I want to put up. I just quoted for you. And we see that the high priest go into the holies of holies, and he go in there before God, and his entire focus is to present the nation, to present the tribes, to come before God and to hear what it is. Now, people... 
If we look at Jesus in Hebrews chapter 4, 14 to 16, we see that we have got a high priest who is at this moment at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. Is that right? So we see that that high priestly place that Jesus has next to the Father start flowing through his children. And you and I, now last night I gave you the teaching on kings and priests, so you understand a little bit more what I want to say with it. But I want you to understand that some of us in this room, we pray every day. We pray like Daniel. Daniel prayed three times a day. He opened the windows, he prayed three times a day. Is that right? But when... Daniel wanted to move a nation. He didn't just pray three times a day. Daniel went into a level of prayer that I call governmental prayer. What are you talking about, Suzette? We can have everyday prayer. We can have our normal time with God. We can have our normal intercession where we pray for the children and for grandma and for grandpa. And you can, you, jy kan bid vir waarvoor jy wil. Jy kan bid vir die Heere wat ook al jou hart beweeg. Jy kan elke dag vir die Heere kom. Ek vir, ek, elke ochtend as ek vier uur opstaan en ek bid, dan bid ek dat dit wat op my hart is. Ek aanbid die Heere. Ek, ek bid in tale. Ek hou van loof. So vroeg in die ochtend as het begin licht wil, dan loop ek hier en ek bid en ek bid toe my net so, ek het net gemeenskap met die Heere, verstaan jy? Maar, as ek by een plek kom, waar ek nou ernstig begin bid, om een land in beweging te bring, of een stad oop te bid, of een gebied oop te bid, dan sit dit een ander story. Then I come to the place, like Daniel, where Daniel kick into governmental prayer. Now we read this whole life story of Daniel, how he prayed three times a day, opened the window and prayed, I'm sure, to Jerusalem or for the temple, whatever. We don't know what Daniel prayed in his general prayers. But the moment Daniel needed to start moving governmental prayer, God starts showing us what he prayed. And so let's look at that this morning. Hebrews chapter 4, 14 and 16, please. Jesus, our high priest, everybody together, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. Next one. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. So we see that Jesus Christ at the right hand of the Father is acting right now in that high priestly position. Is that correct? Now, what does that mean for us? That means for us when we come into that place of intercession... It's almost for us, if I could dare to put it in such language, like a lawyer that steps into a courtroom. And there you've got those that accuse. You've got the accuser. Now, Revelation chapter 12 says, there is the accuser. Isn't that right? If you and I walk into a courtroom to present our case, you are not walking in there generally. You come to present your case. It's a focus. Yes? Good morning. Amen. Look at your neighbor and says, hey, wake up. She's preaching already. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come on, church. You need to understand, general prayer is where God will use you to come down a list and God needs, it, needs that. That's a vital part of the body of Christ to cover that, to pray for the neighborhood, to pray for those in authority, to pray for the kings, to pray for the area, to bless the area, to pray for the streets, to pray for this, to pray for that. That's general intercession and it's a must. But when you come to the high priestly prayer, people, you find people that don't do well with that general, but they walk into a courtroom, as it were, before God. And they present a case, and they will not let go until it's through. Now, if we only had those kind of intercessors, we have a problem. 
Because they are so focused and they are so set to pray that through. They will not, they will fast, they will pray, they will cry it out, they will hold it before God, they will present it before the Lord like a case that they almost have to win with the high priest of God. Do you understand? Now, those kind of people are so focused in prayer that, the, that if we only had those kind of people, all the general covering of those in authority and the government and the schools and the children and the orphanage and the, and the children's home and the creche and all of that will, will not have intercession because the general intercessors will do that. You understand? These people that God anointed into this direction, their characteristics is quite different. And now you see Daniel. Daniel shifted now. And he says, we see that, for example, in Revelation chapter 12, we see that the accuser is there. But now we see actually in John chapter 14, verse 26, the Holy Spirit is our advocate. Write it down. In John chapter 14, verse 26. The Holy Spirit is your advocate. So if I would walk into that court, my God, my Father is there. I have got an accuser that is accusing the brethren. I walk in there not because I'm so great or so smart, but because Jesus paid in the atonement for me. I walk in there purely by the grace of the blood. Amen. And so do you. But that's why we have the right to walk straight in like this morning. There's no necessary to get the right atmosphere and the right feeling and three fast songs and two slow ones. You walk into the presence of God. The Bible says in, in, in um, Hebrew chapter 10, come boldly into the presence of God. So when we do that, and people, please, I don't know if we've got that teaching here in, in, um, uh, in Wellington, but you heard all this kind of teaching. Oh, Jesus rent the veil so that God could come out and fellowship with us. Excuse me, with all respect, with not wanting to offend anybody. That's absolute nonsense. Why? God has never gotten out. He made way for you to go in. Amen. God never moved from his place. God is not changeable. God hasn't now gotten out of the holies of holies and now he came to fellowship with us. No. God made the way for you to fellowship with the Father. So you walk straight in there and you walk in with respect and honor, but you can go boldly into the presence of God. That's what Jesus has paid for. So when you walk in there and now I've got a case that you are bringing before God. And you are really so burdened with this. You really are a crushing thing in your heart about this. And you go and you pray and you, you fast and you focus and you, and you stand before God and you pray and you pray for that thing. And it comes and it, it, it seems to be like a fire in your bones. How many of you know what I'm talking about? How many of you know what I'm talking about? And there's such an urge that you find you can't almost not pray for anything else. And you're so focused on this thing and you present that case before God and Lord, I really pray for this young man in the name of Jesus. Yes, I know he has failed. Yes, I know he's far from God, Lord. I know that he is not serving you at the moment, but Lord, I'm standing in that gap and I stand before you for him today. And Lord, I stand before you in prayer because you said that you are righteous. That kind of prayer. I'm dealing with a case. You understand what I mean, my brother? If you have to go and present yourself in court when you are accused about something, or maybe one of your children, whoever is accused, I think you could be pretty straight and forward. Isn't that right? That's the kind of prayer I'm talking about. That's the kind of prayer I'm talking about. If you walk into a place and you feel very strong about something, and you're upset because you were unrighteously treated. Man, I think you, jy gaan right of die man af. Ja of nie? That's the kind of prayer I'm talking about. We are not impressing God. We don't have to come in there and pretend. We don't have to come and sound spiritual and act, oh, Father, yeah, and I just praise you, hallelujah. Come on to the point you deal with the living God. Walk in there and you present your case. That's what I call high priestly prayer. And so where do I see that? I see that, first of all, actually with Daniel. And I want to take you to that governmental prayer. 
where you are identified. You pray to the Lord, my God, and confess in total identification, and then you're dealing with that case as if it is yours. And when you do that and you understand that, then you not only present your case before God in strong arguments, but we see in Daniel chapter 9, if you would go there, in Daniel chapter 9 from verse 16 and 17, it's quite long. We see Daniel shifted, people listen to me first. We see Daniel shifted from general prayer to a place that he present Israel before God. Now, ek is a Suid-Afrikaner, maar ek was 34 jaar uit die land uit. Ek is nou eerst weer terug. Die Heer het my die hele wereld volgestuur. Maar toe ons een paar weke gelede, toe ons so een gebedsgroep, wat ons nou rechtig voor die Heere vast in bid, en ons het om in so 24 uur gebed ingevat. En ek was in Duitsland daai tyd. En in Duitsland op daai oomlik het ons hierdie, ek het dit gelei van daaraf. En ons het die bidders hier in Suid-Afrika gehad en in, in Indonesia en in Malaysia en everywhere else. En in daai gebedsgroep het ek om begelei 24 uur. En ek het begin richting gee 24 uur. En ek het mense gehad wat het nodig gehad het waar ek kon sê, dit is die skrif wat ons bid vandag. Hier is die punte wat ons doorbid. En hulle het gevoel, ja, ek kan daarmee, ek kan daarmee leef, ek, ek kan daarmee aangaan. En dan het ek ander gehad, waar ek gesê het, ons moet nou hierdie ding voor die Heere bring. And they were so focused and so set, and they were so burdened with this thing. And you know, while I was praying there, ek, ek ondou, uh, my papi, ek het groot geword in die vrystaat, soos ek gesê het. En terwijl ek daar bid, toe bid ek oor Suid-Afrika. En jylle mense, ek kan nou nou net uit my hart uit met u praat, en vir u sê wat met my gebeur het daar. En terwijl ek daar bid, bid ek so vir my land en ek bid vir my volk en ek bid vir Suid-Afrika en ek vind skielik hoe ek voor God intree en asof ek recht voor die Heere staan en ek begin praat met die Heere en ek sê, Heere, ek kom voor u en dit is wat my hele gees identificeer met ons, met ons verlede. But I was part of the answer, not part of the problem. You understand? I gave my life to Jesus at the age of 22, and at that time, with apartheid, I was actually disowned by my own dad for actually working among the Zulu people, remember, Tia? My dad disowned me, and he, he, he took me right out of the family tree and right out of the family books. Why? Because I decided to, my, that Jesus, when he called me, he called me among the beautiful Zulu people. And my best friend at that time was a Zulu girl. And my father, my father was so angry. My father was so quiet. My pa was so quiet that he my ingeroep het en gesê, vandag kies jy tussen ons en jou werk. And I come and said, you said, I'm, I'm a daughter of my dad. What can I say? The, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. And I got up and I said, dad, I've never disobeyed you. But when it comes to Jesus, I have to follow Jesus Christ. And my dad disowned me. I was totally taken out. When my dad died and when my mom died, thank God they came to Jesus in time. But when they died, I was totally removed from any inheritance from our farm and everything else. Doesn't matter. Why? So I thought I'm part of the answer, not part of the problem. And then I stood before God. And I found myself identifying with the land of South Africa. And I start praying as if I was the one who took that whip. As if I was the one that was so harsh and so hard. As if I was the one that, that like my dad, would not excuse me for saying that. That my dad would not allow a black lady in the room where he was. And I stood before God and I start repenting for that. And I cry out as if it was me. And I found myself repenting. And then from that position, I found myself rising before God and I hold the character of God before him. And I say, this is who you are and I hold you to this and I deal with this matter and I pray for this matter now. And in Jesus' name, I am not going to let go until it's true. That's that kind of prayer. But not everybody can do that. And it is also not the call of everybody. So if you are that kind of person, don't expect it from everybody else. Let's not box everybody into our calling. Let you do what you're called to do and let them do what they are called to do. 
Come on, say amen. Say to your neighbor, hallelujah, I am free.